God's protection. Although as Christ followers, we will sometimes suffer serious persecution and even death, we are to trust God never to leave us or forsake us. Here's Gene to explain. This principle relates to God's protection in the lives of the children of Israel when they were rebuilding the temple. In spite of opposition, uh, God protected them. And we read about this in Ezra chapter 5, verses 3 to 5, in the rebuilding of the temple where they were able to resume the rebuilding of that temple. At that time, Tatanai, the governor of the region west of the Euphrates River, Shethar, Bozenai, and their colleagues came to the Jews and asked, and here are some very intimidating questions. They're trying to intimidate them. Who gave you the order to rebuild this temple and finish this structure? They also asked them, here's another intimidating question. What are the names of the workers who are constructing this building? That's particularly intimidating because once somebody asks for your name, what are they going to do with that name? And how are they going to use it against you? So this was a, an intimidating process and procedure. But notice, here's the good news. But God was watching over the Jewish elders. These men wouldn't stop them until a report was sent to Darius so that they could receive written instructions about this matter. In other words, they were not intimidated. They proceeded and they followed a procedure in order to let these people know that they had permission and approval and help even from the king to do what they were doing. So we see God's protection in this situation. And as I was reflecting on this and thinking of a New Testament correlation, I couldn't help but think of Paul when he was in prison the first time, chained to a Roman guard, and he wrote to the Philippians. And notice what he said, Yes, and I will rejoice because I know this, that is, my imprisonment. He's talking about his imprisonment here. I will rejoice because I know this will lead to my deliverance. And I want you to underscore the word in your mind, Deliverance. What does he mean by deliverance? Does he mean he's going to get out of prison? Not necessarily. Deliverance to Paul meant far more than being delivered from prison. Let me start that over again so you get the flow. Yes, and I'll rejoice because I know this will lead to my deliverance through your prayers and help from the Spirit of Jesus Christ. My eager expectation and hope is that I will not be ashamed about anything. That, by the way, is part of the deliverance, not being ashamed of Jesus. I will not be ashamed about anything, but that now, as always, with all boldness, Christ will be highly honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For me, living is Christ and dying is gain. What was the deliverance? The deliverance was, I may get out of prison, and that gives me more opportunity to live for Christ and to preach Christ and even to minister to you, referring to the Philippians. But if they take my life in death, I will really be delivered. I will be delivered into the presence of Jesus forever, totally, totally free. So you see, uh, the Apostle Paul is, is uh, talking here about God's protection in some of the most difficult situations. We see this illustrated here in this Old Testament scenario. We see it verified and illustrated in the life of the Apostle Paul. And this uh, leads to a very important question in terms of application. Why is Paul's example in Philippians? along with that of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, so encouraging, especially to Christians who are facing serious persecution and even the prospect of martyrdom. And I mention here Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That takes us back to the book of Daniel. But now there's a principle that emerged from what happened. So let me share the principle first. 
from Daniel, and it's called Facing Persecution. We're to trust God to empower us to avoid any form of idolatry, regardless of the persecution we may experience. And the backdrop to this is that King Nebuchadnezzar, in his arrogance, built this huge statue. And he said, when you hear all of these musical instruments, you're to bow down and you worship this huge statue. However, these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, said, no way. We are not going to bow down to an idol. Well, you know what happened. In fact, it was reported that anybody who doesn't bow down is going to be thrown into a fiery furnace. And they knew that, but they still refused to bow down. And they were called in before the king. These were guys that were very highly respected. They had passed the tests in the University of Babylon along with Daniel. We're not sure where Daniel was at this particular point in time, but when they were called in before the king, they just simply said, O king, we cannot bow down to that idol. And if we live, we live. If we die, we die. They were ready. They knew the result. And consequently, they were thrown into this fire or furnace. And God, in His sovereign grace, decided to protect them, to honor them. And they looked into that fire, and there was a fourth person. And we know who that fourth person was. It was Jesus Christ Himself protecting them. And they were delivered from that fiery furnace. And then King Nebuchadnezzar reversed himself and criticized and threatened everybody who wouldn't bow down to the God of these three men. But the fact is that these guys did not know whether they were going to live or whether they were going to die, just like the Apostle Paul. And they said, if we die, we die. If we are saved, we're saved. But we will not, we will not commit idolatry. And so you have this Old Testament illustration that really, along with the Apostle Paul and along with these Jews who were protected in the building of the temple, illustrate for us this principle. Although as Christ followers, we will sometimes suffer serious persecution and even death, we are to trust God never to leave us or forsake us. I sometimes wonder how Christians practice that principle in facing death. I've never faced that. I can only hope that I would have the courage and the strength to stand firm and true before my Lord Jesus Christ. 